Hello and welcome to a new edition of Africa Today. And in this edition of our program, we will talk about the year 2022 and how Africa's interests stopped Cairo's foreign policy uh, priorities in uh, this year and uh, in its report uh, the, foreign the foreign ministry said that Cairo has been seeking to have an active role in various mechanisms of uh, joint uh, Arab action, uh, African action rather, uh, more in this report. According to a report released by the Foreign Ministry on Saturday, Cairo in 2022 continued the efforts aimed at strengthening relations with African countries for being a top priority in the country's foreign policy. The report said since 2014, Egypt has been seeking to have an active role in various mechanisms of joint African action and was keen to enhance presence in Africa through several visits to African states and signing many bilateral agreements in different fields. It said that after assuming the African Union's presidency in 2019, Cairo has maintained cooperation with all African countries and positively responded to the developments in Africa. It said Cairo's plan to achieve food security for Africa includes establishing mechanisms to reduce the debt burden through exemption, exchange or easy payment and intensifying agriculture investments directed to Africa through the transfer of modern technologies on easy terms as well as keeping global trade open. The report highlighted Cairo's keenness to achieve consensus among African countries on the main threats to peace and security, for most of which is the threat of terrorism, as it said, as well as its efforts to attain sustainable development in the continent. In this context, it said Cairo saw during its presidency of the African Union in 2019 to attach great importance to the most important collective action mechanisms agreed upon within the framework of the African Union, especially the AU Agenda 2063. Welcome back uh, and uh, to shed more light uh, on uh, Egypt and uh, Africa's interests uh, topped uh, Cairo's uh, foreign policy priorities in 2022. We are joined over the phone uh, by Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? Great, sir. So, sir, how uh, would you describe uh, Cairo's uh, Africa dimension? We are continuing our efforts since decades and uh, especially in the recent years when we, sh we uh, shared the uh, African Union by our president, who was the chairman, in 2019. The uh, same time we were representing Africa in the Security Council of the United Nations. Now we are uh, spreading our efforts all over the continent. Everywhere you will find Egyptians, either diplomat or experts in many fields. And we are continuing to do that, and I think we are expanding also this efforts. We have seen a few days ago Sameh Shukri in Tanzania or in the occasion of opening the new dam of Julius Nereri. And, of course, my generation, we know who is Julius Nereri, the uh, hero of uh, independence in uh, Tanzania. And we helped them to build their uh, dam. And uh, this is exactly the role Egypt wants to play, to help uh, African countries in order to uh, get better independence and better situation in the economic situation. And we hope we continue this and even enlarging our efforts for the sake of the African people and the Egyptian uh, countries. So, uh, sir, uh, uh, also, how would you list the common challenges uh, facing Africa and uh, how does Egypt work uh, with African countries on facing these challenges during the year 2022? Uh, here we have challenges and uh, uh, options and occasions yes. also. We have many good occasions in Africa mm -hmm. in order to establish new projects to yes. export more to Africa to attract more direct investment to the continent. On the other side, we have uh, many, many uh, challenges, uh, not the least that uh, the, the epidemic of corona, we, we don't find enough uh, vaccine for everyone who needs it. 
the impact of the war in Ukraine is uh, really uh, annoying every single country in the world. What about Africa, which is economically uh, much weaker than other areas of the world? So we are doing this and that. Opportunities, we are taking the, the option of expanding, exporting, uh, more investment. And we have challenges. That we have wars among uh, tribes and uh, factions and uh, parties in the African continent, and we are trying to attract their attention to the country. It is the country which is, should uh, raise its flag and to stop the tribe wars here and there. Even in some Arab countries like Libya, it is a matter of different tribes and uh, parties. Now we are doing this job, whether it is uh, to stop the challenges and to face it, or to take opportunity of the good chances for more development and establishing new projects. Yes. So, sir, uh, uh, also, uh, if we talk about uh, how do you describe Cairo's response uh, to global threats facing African states like floods, uh, lack of uh, COVID vaccines, climate change, and uh, food security? We are a leader in this domain. Yes. Egypt has many uh, initiatives concerning this, not the least that we are asking the developed countries to come and mm -hmm. invest in Africa with our technical help, because Egypt knows Africa better than anyone else, and we are most acceptable face to the African countries. So we have a good reaction from China, from Japan, from the European Union, who welcome the Egyptian initiative, and we shall continue attracting more and more donors and more and more uh, investors in Africa in order to help the, those countries who are aiming at uh, much more development and sustainable economy. Yes, uh, also, sir, uh, President of the uh, participated recently in the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, African American, uh, U.S. African Leaders uh, Summit in Washington. And uh, uh, how do you describe Egypt's participation uh, in this uh, summit as it comes uh, at the end of the year? And it summed up uh, many of the problems uh, that face the African countries. This is one good dimension of our foreign policy. And as you yes. will know, under the umbrella of the Arab League, mm. we have sort of dialogue between Arabs and China. We, we have been uh, participating there. Between Arabs and India, between Arabs and uh, Europe, we, we hosted this in, uh, in Sharm Sheikh. And now uh, our president uh, met his counterparts from many countries yes. of Africa and the Americas in, in this meeting which took place in uh, America. And I appreciate this very much because as you will know, Americans are keen for their own market. They are not interested for other markets, especially in Africa, which is not paying enough for any effort you are uh, exploring. Yes. So uh, we, we, we do what we can, and it's much better than before. We shall continue this effort, and I think that uh, this is a, a good news that uh, America is interested to talk to Africa and to explore more efforts for the sake of the continent. Yes, sir. Uh, also, what fields need swift action for the development of Africa in 2023? This is very important also because always we say that although Africa is the poorest continent in the world, it pays flow of money going from Africa to America and to Europe and the developed countries much more than it receives. Because Africa is paying its debts, it's paying its, uh, the cost of its imports much more than it receives of investment or much more than uh, Africa is importing to the other world. This formula has to be changed for the sake of Africa. The normal uh, should be that flow of money and investment should come from abroad to Africa, not the contrary.
Yes. So, uh, sir, uh, also, if we uh, talk uh, about the interest of the United States uh, in the African countries, uh, and uh, also we have seen that it has uh, given uh, many funds to the African uh, nations, uh, how can we utilize uh, these funds for the benefit of African countries? Very good development, because uh, I know when I was serving in Africa that Americans are not very keen to, yes. to uh, be present in Africa, mm. because as I said before, it doesn't pay enough. And w one American uh, friend told me that what I am doing in Africa in one year, I can do it in Japan in one day. Uh, of course, big economies are much more uh, interesting for investors. So uh, we, we invited many countries to come and to invest in Africa and to make more and more trade there. And our uh, agency for the and uh, partnership Africa is doing a fine job, but it needs more capital. And we are trying to give uh, what we can of capital uh, available in Egypt. And we are asking our partners to help us to do this job, which will benefit Africa and the whole African country. Yes, I'd like to thank you, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former assistant foreign minister. Thank you for being with us. And uh, back uh, to our program and uh, some reports from the African continent. And uh, Cairo sent condolences uh, to South Africa over the explosion of a fuel tanker that killed scores of people. Authorities said the death toll from the explosion in the city of uh, uh, East Johannesburg has climbed to 18. More in this report. A truck carrying liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, got stuck under a bridge in Buxburg on Saturday, causing a leak and explosion that initially killed 10 people and unleashed widespread damage. A further eight people have since died of severe burns and injuries. Nine of the 18 victims worked at the nearby Tambo Memorial Hospital, including a driver and eight nurses, after the explosion blew out its windows and collapsed its roofs. A total of 37 people on the hospital site, including 24 patients and 13 staff members, sustained severe burns and were taken to other hospitals. The explosion caused extensive damage to private and public infrastructure within an estimated 500 meters from the scene. Videos on social media showed a huge fireball under the bridge, which the tanker appeared to have been too high to go under. It was carrying 60,000 liters of LPG, which is used especially in cooking and gas stoves. And uh, a delegation from uh, Ethiopia's federal government visited the capital of the war torn Tigray region on Monday to oversee the implementation of last month's peace agreement. The visit was reported by the government communication service and the region's ruling party, which said it is the first high-level federal delegation to travel to Tigray in two years. Details follow. A high-level Ethiopian government delegation on Monday made the first visit to the capital of rebel-held Tigray since the signing of a peace deal last month aimed at ending a brutal two-year conflict. Both sides applauded the visit, which sought to build on the November 2 accord, with the Tigrayans saying the talks also focused on restoring key services to the crippled northern region. The Ethiopian government said in a statement that the delegation is the first of its stature at a high-level federal government body heading to Mekele in two years. It said this gesture is an attention to the peace agreement getting on the right track and progressing. The team was led by House of People's Representatives Speaker Tagese Shafo and included Ridwan Hussein, who was the security advisor to Prime Minister Abe Ahmed, as well as the Ministers of Justice, Transport and Communication and Labor. The government said the head of Ethiopia Road Infrastructure Authority and the heads of Ethiopian Airlines, Ethio Telecom, and the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia representing services to grace desperately lacks were also present. Shafu hailed the discussions they had and the reception. Tigrayan spokesman Gitasho Reda on Twitter described the visit as a milestone in the peace agreement. And uh, by that, dear viewers, we come to the end of today's edition of uh, Africa Today. Thank you for watching.